have to tell you. Hmm. These are the best muffins I ever had. I'm supposed to meet a client for a house showing today, but <laughs> I can't stop eating. Maybe you know him. Mr. Nolan Cassidy? Um, can say that I do. Well, he's, uh, he's interested in the Schmidt house down the road. You know, the one that police shut down after the, well, incident? I'm not really from around here, senor. I don't know anything about that. Ah, I see. Well, never mind. He can wait a little longer. I need to squeeze a couple more of these beauties down. Hola, senor. Feel free to taste one of our sample muffins. Ellen's muffins are the best in town and they're free every Saturday. Ah, oh, James. How's it going out there at the muffin stand? Just fine, Mrs. West. They're moving fast. One guy out there in particular seems to really like them. I'm not a local fellow. Oh, that's nice. Are there enough cakes, or do I need to make more? I can always make more. Well, honestly, he's wolfing them down at an impressive pace. But he's got to take a break at some point. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to make some more. All right, my darling. Thank you. Helen, how are you today? Oh, just fine, Janus, darling. It's Saturday, so I've been making a lot of muffins for the town. You know how I love to spoil everyone. You would have made a good Soviet citizen, Helen. The West could use more people like you. Kind, benign, altruistic. Ah, oh, well, I don't know about all that. I just feel like giving something back to the community that has given me so much. Speaking of which, when are you coming over? Your robe is ready. Ah, excellent. I'm still a little sore, but maybe later, if my muscles stop cramping so much. I would love that. Me too. <clears throat> anyway, I will let you get on with your baking. I will call you again later, perhaps. All right, darling. Why should I have to buy a cordless phone? If he'd just call me on the mobile like I keep telling him to... <sighs> Saturday is Muffin Day, Gunther. But I'm not seeing any muffins here. Uh, I think some of the boys may have been a little snack hungry, Mr. Janus. Hmm. I remember the first time I had a blueberry muffin. It was 1976. The American Embassy in East Berlin. In the old Prussian Officers Club. I was there. On a diplomatic assignment, of course, but the wife of the ambassador was such a talented pastry chef, she managed to completely divert my attention from the task at hand. That sounds incredible, Mr. Janice. Those muffins, Gunther, were absolutely fantastic. In all of the years since, I never found anyone who could recreate those muffins until Helen moved in next door. So, imagine my disappointment when you now tell me those muffins, those little snippets of heaven, are all gone. I understand. I'll see what I can do. Good. Good. Finally, I thought I was going to die before getting my hands on one of these wonderful muffins again. Aha! There we are. Just what I needed. This should get the old heart racing again. Oh my. I was sure I was going to have to kill someone to secure one of these muffins. Say, wouldn't you like to come out to the stand and join us, giving away all these wonderful muffins? 
Oh, I'd love to, my darling, but I've got to do some sewing. Janus has a dressing gown that needs a few touch-ups, and he's getting anxious. Apparently, he needs it for something soon. You seem to have so many the things for Janus. West. What could he need I that don't know for? Know how you find the time? Well, when you're retired, you can get an astonishing amount of things done. A ceremonial robe of some sort with a note from Janus attached. Hmm. The note is interesting. Janus has asked Helen to do a few repairs on the robe before he leaves for his annual trip. He even put a date there. This is valuable information, 47. Hello, young man. This is Helen West of Helen's Muffin Kitchen. We spoke last week about my tax returns. Yes, that's correct. It's absolutely imperative everything is in order. I've had trouble in the past with this sort of thing, and since the business has taken off quite explosively lately, I really need my taxes to be in order. Well, that is wonderful, young man. Just wonderful. I've sent all the receipts electronically this morning, so you should have them very soon. You have them already? Oh, that was fast. Please call me again next week when you've had a chance to review everything. And apologies for calling you on a Saturday. No, thank you. Hello there, sir. Hello, Helen. Janus, darling, I was just about to call you. My old colleague from the university sent me a copy of his new book. It's a study on the psychological effects of living in suburban America. I think you'd like it. Did he conclude that the cookie-cutter design, the unnaturalness of the hasty urban planning and the feeling of malaise expressed by most residents in suburbs are somehow connected? Well, yes. I've had 90-odd years to understand the human condition, Helen. I've lived through some of the most iconic moments in recent history. I shaped some of them with my own hands. Nothing about the psychology of humanity surprises me anymore. If you place people inside big boxes, located inside big gardens, or surrounded by wide streets and long driveways, you create a prison. Isolation and the sense of solitude is fundamental in the construction of the suburb. I think you're being a little pessimistic here, my darling. I quite like it here. The layout of the American suburb is designed to create an, an impersonal culture that fosters anxiety and fuels consumerism. You can only drive to places from here, and the only places worth driving to are places where you spend money. The suburb is the perfect commercial and capitalistic housing unit. Uh, that sounds very interesting, my darling. Let's discuss this some more once I've read his book. Bye now. It cannot be that hard to just learn a person's mobile number, even for him. A little more cream of tartar should do it. Excuse me, can you get out of my face, please? What can I do for you? Mrs. West, so good to see you today. The name's Blake, Charles Blake, the third. You will have seen my name at the top of the Homeowners Association letterheads. Oh, yes, of course. Well, Mrs. West, as you may have heard, I'm running for office in this fine state of ours, and I just wanted to make sure you knew about my program. You see, I care deeply about the plights of the elderly in our community, and I know you're one of the rare enterprising people out there who wants to run her own business. Gray gold and all that. <laughs> Am I right? Why, yes. I do have a small bakery business. 
and have had the luck to appear on television in Vermont. Excellent. Very good. Well, here's the deal, Helen. Oh, can I call you Helen? <laughs> I think you deserve to grow your empire even further. I want to help you with that. Why sell muffins in Whittleton Creek in Vermont alone when you could be selling them to the entire country when you could have your own cooking show on national television? Well, that certainly sounds exciting. It does, doesn't it? Just vote for me, Charles Blake III, on Election Day, and I promise I will take care of things for you personally. Well, I will definitely remember that, Mr. Blake. Excellent. You have a nice day, Helen. Mr. Freeman, it's Helen West. I'm returning your call. Well, while I do find the offer intriguing, I don't think I'm quite ready to go on national television yet. I appreciate your eagerness, of course, but I'm just trying to grow the business a little bit at a time. Oh, I have no doubt it would create a lot of exposure for the company, but, well, quite frankly, I'm not one for the limelight. A few books, perhaps, but live television. Well, all right, I suppose I could have a think about it, but, Mr. Freeman, I really have to run now. It's Saturday, and I'm baking muffins for the whole of Whittleton Creek. I must get back to that now. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. So many egg whites, my goodness. But so... You are way too close to me, and you're really freaking me out. Can you just leave me, please? Yes, this is Helen West speaking. I'm just checking in. Well, no, I have not. My business is growing again, and so I may have to leave the state towards the end of the fiscal year, but I have no plans before that. It should not happen until after my probation period ends. Yes, the final court costs will be transferred from my account within the next 60 days. My accountant is working on it right now, in fact. Thank you. Have a nice day. Helen, I just realized you've been back for a full year now. I... well, I suppose it has been a year now. Yes. My, how time flies. I understand how you feel. I too was forced to leave my normal life for a time. While it wasn't ideal, I do believe now that it made me a better human. Stronger. More resilient. I think it's probably one of the reasons I've lived this long. Funny. I'd always written your longevity up to plain old stubbornness, Janus. I made some fundamental choices in life that have, for better or worse, kept me going through the years. I've been driven by a dogged determination to see events unfold as I wanted them. Maybe that is just stubbornness. And you're able to live with the choices you've made? The effects they've had on the world? Yes. They were, after all, conscious choices made in an attempt to better the world. I see nothing wrong with that. That's good to hear, my darling. Well, I have muffins to bake. We should talk later. No, no, it's fine. I love being completely stationary when you're blathering on. I've got nothing better to do, naturally. Do you mind? You're really pissing me off. Can you just leave me alone? Please go away. I'm hot and you are not. Sinister looking basement. What could she be doing down here?
It looks like something violent took place here. Hmm. Huh. The previous owner seems to have been connected with Janus somehow. The police report mentions they found him here in a pool of blood. The house has been sealed off until a few weeks ago. Death was ruled as a severe allergic reaction. seem to make a difference. It's more or less advanced chemistry at this point. So many things that can interact. But I have to choose one. The recipe must be perfect. Hmm. This additive is supposedly tasteless, but it does something to the consistency of the cake. Maybe if I reduce the amount of milk powder to offset the added dry ingredients. The problem is that the milk protein molecules are more complicated and larger overall than those of the additive. Mm. It would slightly increase the absorption time, but probably not to the point where the additive would be rendered less potent. Uh, if only I had access to Schmidt's blood work. Well, that's all destroyed now, so it won't do thinking about it. Still, it was an interesting reaction, albeit entirely unexpected. I wonder if that plumber has similar allergies. Oh, I really must get my things in order down here. What's wrong with me? I can't find anything anymore. Decorated agent, former Secret Service, eager, meticulous, uh, and forceful. Yes. I don't much like him either. Mr. Janus, I didn't say that. Please don't insult my intelligence. My body is frail and failing, but my mind is sharp as ever. Everything you just said points to a neurotic man with serious father issues. His dedication to providence rather than his country points to an unreliable personality. He is a control freak, a man without a steady base. He has had one or two marginally romantic relationships with women reminding him of his mother, but is ultimately unable to construct actual emotional attachments to people in the long term. He is a wooden figurine carved by an uncaring system using a blunt tool and little imagination. You got all that from what I said? I may have done a bit of research when he started talking about restricting my travel arrangements. Just in case, you know. Ever the spy, Mr. Janus. Janus, what a lovely surprise. Come in. Come in. Thank you, Helen. It's so good to see you over here, my darling. How are you feeling? Better. The days have their ups and downs, as I'm sure you know. Nolan Cassidy is a, well, excuse me, but a real pain in the ass. I never did understand why you needed to have so much security around you, Janus. It's been like that all my adult life, so it's hardly something I notice anymore. But this new Herald, well... He's no Schmidt. You liked Schmidt, didn't you? I did. But I, I want you to know that I hold no grudge. 
I can't say I fully understand why you... Well, I've done much worse. Much worse. Janus, I... It was an accident. I want you to know that. He wasn't supposed to die. I believe you, Helen. You went through things while away that no person of your fragile nature should have to go through. Experiences like that, they change a person, stir at things deep inside that should not be stirred, and which, if brought to the surface, cannot easily be pushed under again. I think it's always been there, the urge. My brother had pets. They would inexplicably die and mother would be furious with him. I... I enjoyed that. At university, I would spike the boys' drinks just to see what happened. One of them fell from a window and broke his back, but I got it under control until... well... You know, Helen, this is good. I feel like this opens a new part of our relationship. There are things I know about drugs, poisons, chemicals I could teach you. If you wish to learn, but I think that is for another time. I am tired now. I am glad we talked, Helen. Me too, Janus. Me too. Hmm. Where did I place the sedative? I'm sure it's here somewhere. ready now. So much time wasted trying to keep my true nature in check. This is who I am. Despite that awful year in prison, at least I know now, this is who I was always meant to be. You can't be here. Please, leave now. I did to you, I'm sorry. Please, please let me go. 